welcome to Anne Chapel at ProQuest Christian Healing Centre. And thank you for joining us for our encounter with Jesus today. My name is Penny and it's just a pleasure to be with you all, both those here and watching at home. As we come into the Lord's presence, we can say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you welcome us into your presence. You say, come, my children, come. And we come and we thank you, we worship you, we want to tell you we love you. And we pray that in Holy Spirit power you'll move among us today. Open your word. Touch us with your breath. May we know your love enfolding us during this time. And we give you all our love, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, two weeks ago, I spoke about Simon Peter's risk of faith when he stepped out on the water to be with Jesus. We saw that when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. However, Jesus was close by and he rescued Peter. And it was through that the disciples recognised Jesus as truly being the Son of God. Well, today we're going to look at a woman who took a risk of faith. Maybe you haven't thought of the woman with the issue of blood before in this way. But we will see how she too was rescued from her sickness and was made completely well and whole. The story is in three of the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark and Luke. But I'm going to read from Luke 5, 25 to 34, from the Message Version. And it's entitled, A Risk of Faith. A woman who has suffered a condition of hemorrhaging for 12 years, a long succession of physicians who treated her, and treated her badly, taking all her money and leaving her worse off than before. She'd heard about Jesus, and she slipped in from behind and touched his robe. And she was thinking to herself, if I can put a finger on his robe, I can get well. And the moment she did it, the flow of blood dried up. She could feel the change and knew her plague was over and done with. At the same moment, Jesus felt energy discharging from him. He turned round to the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples thought, What are you talking about? With this crowd pushing and jostling you, you're asking, Who touched me? Dozens have touched you. He went on, looking around to see who had done it. And the woman, knowing what had happened, knowing she was the one, stepped up in fear and trembling and knelt before him. She gave him her whole story. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, you took a risk of faith. And now you're healed and whole. Live well. Live blessed. Be healed of your plague. We know, don't we, that this story comes in the middle of the sandwich of Jesus healing Jairus' daughter, who's 12 years old. And Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house when our story unfolds. So with all the crowds following Jesus and his disciples, and of course Jairus leading the way, we find this woman reaching out in utter desperation just to reach Jesus, to touch him, his robe or tassels of his prayer shawl, which is known as a zizit. She knows that will be sufficient. And it might have been just like this one here. These tassels that hang down. And she might have felt she just wanted to reach out and touch that. 
if she couldn't see, touch the road. But what do we know about this woman of faith? We don't know her name, we don't know her background. And what risk did she take? We do know that she suffered with bleeding for 12 years. This caused her, as well as the pain and discomfort, to be considered ceremonially unclean until seven days after the bleeding had stopped. Then she had to go to the temple for purification. And you can read about that in Leviticus 15, 9 to the end. She wasn't allowed out to work, to worship or shop. Anything or anybody who came into contact with her would be considered unclean too. She'd been in lockdown, isolation for 12 years, a prisoner in her own home. Can you imagine? And I assume a kind neighbour or family member might have bought her food and water and left it outside. Maybe we know that experience too, but not for 12 years, thankfully. But we read she spent all her money on seeking a cure from physicians, no doubt trying new age remedies at the time, but nothing had worked. And in fact, she'd become worse. This poor woman had nothing left. She was no longer a member of her community, no relationship, no work, no opportunity to worship, money all gone. She was nothing and had nothing, not even hope. And one day she hears a buzz from her open window. Jesus the healer is on his way. He's coming to the Rabbi Jairus's house to heal his dying daughter. Jesus coming her way? A glimmer of hope sprung up in her. Could she just get to Jesus? Surely if she could just reach out and touch him, he wouldn't even know, would he? Would he? But if she was found out, of course, she would be guilty of making him unclean and all those that she may come into close contact with, and she would face very severe punishment. But for her, this was only a fleeting thought. She had to take the risk. In desperation, this was her only hope. I suspect she very quickly wrapped a shawl around her head and face and crept out to the main street. It was absolutely packed, thronging with excited, chattering people. She hadn't missed him, had she? No, he was just there on the corner. And she bending very low, right down between the crowds, inches her way through the legs of everybody on the street and puts her hand out in hope and in faith. Could she reach? Could she reach Jesus? And as her fingers brush the tassels, she knows instantly the bleeding has stopped. She just wants to melt into the crowd at this point and disappear. But no, Jesus stopped. Everything, everyone stops for that moment. And Jesus is asking, who touched him? Of course, he's being jostled by the crowds, many touching him. But Jesus knew the power of God had gone out of him. He knew a person had been cured Jesus doesn't leave it there. No, he wants to do even more for her. And she eventually speaks out, trembling in fear. She moves forward and kneeling, tells her story in front of everyone. Her secret is out in the open. What's going to happen to her? Jesus speaks to the woman and calls her daughter, an affectionate family term. Now she is someone again. She's special. She's a daughter of the kingdom. Jesus doesn't call anyone else that. 
in any of the Gospels. He says to her, you took a risk of faith and now you're healed and whole, not just cured. Live well, live blessed, be healed. Wow, now she can work. She can become a member of her community again. She can attend worship, be in relationship once more, and be a daughter. How amazing! In this moment, the woman's faith in Jesus transforms her life. She in faith reached out, and Jesus stopped. Uncleanness no longer radiating from the woman to Jesus, rather Jesus' healing power flowing through her. Is it worth the risk? I'm sure she thought so. So let us pause there. And Stephen uh, will play quietly for us the song, Open Our Eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, to say that we love him. And let us make that our prayer now. And indeed, maybe Jesus wants to do something more for us. Maybe he wants to stop and speak to you, speak to me. Daughter, son, are we ready to reach out to him? Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. children of the kingdom, sons and daughters. We too are special. So much so you stopped and stooped to this earth for us because of your immense love for us. And we reach out to you now. Please take our faith. Maybe it's the size of a mustard seed and grow it on to become the people you want us to be, that we too may be healed and made whole, set free, transformed, our lives changed. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. We give you the power, the glory, the honour, Lord. Thank you. Amen. And as we come to close, we pray here that all those at home today may know the blessing of Jesus, his healing, being made whole, his transformation. In his precious name we ask it. Amen. So, the blessing of peace and comfort and joy for each and every one today. And thank you for being with us. Amen.